All right, you guys, so today we're going to be going over how to choose a star to study when you're um, when you're getting ready to observe a system for uh, double stars. So the first step is really to use the Stellarium video that I posted before that's about how to know what time of night will actually be night around the telescope and what sections of the sky that corresponds with. So that you're able to know what stars you can image actually at that time. So once you have that information, the first step just come over here and Google, and you're going to want to Google the Washington Double Star Catalog. I just do WDS Catalog, click on this first option, and you're in. So once you're here, this is what it'll look like. We really don't care about this top section. What we're here for is this hour section area. So these are the hours that you would see in your right ascension that you're trying to decide, you know, such and such hour works for me at night. So if my nighttime sky was from 17 to 24, just a random example, probably not even accurate, um, I could use this 18 to 23, or even if it was 18 to 21, I could I could use those pieces of the sky that worked for me. So once you have a section of sky that works for you, you just click on them. And you go in, and this is what it looks like. It looks kind of jumbled, kind of like a lot of information, but if you break it down, it's not too bad. So in this first column, we have the WDS identifier, or how that system, star system, is known to the WDS. Then here, Epic, you have when it was first imaged and last imaged. Here, the number sign is how many times it's been imaged, how many times it's been studied and recorded. Theta, this is your position angle from 0 to 360 of the two component stars. Rho here, we're talking separation, so how far apart the stars are, and it's given in arc seconds. So that's how far apart they are in arc seconds. Magnitudes here, primary and secondary, so the two component stars. This tells you how bright they are, and that'll be important later as well. Spectral type, if you're interested, it's not always listed. Proper motion, also not always listed, and there's a better way to get better information on that. So it's there, it's good, but it's not super important for us. Over here, note, note is very important. So if they have a letter here, there's a special area that tells us what each letter means, and we'll go over that in a second. And that's something we wanna consider as we choose our star. And here are the precise coordinates. So these are the coordinates that you'd wanna copy to put into the system or to give to someone to put in the system to take the images for you because this is where the star is located okay so if i were to you know choose a star my first thing to do would be i'd say this is the identifier these are the coordinates and then i would put those into the system to be able to image that in the night sky and i would have to know you know what time it's up in the night sky which is part of its precise coordinates right of course so let's talk about the important things when choosing a star we've gone over what each of these means so identifier, not really important. First thing that I find important is you want to know when it was first and last observed and how many times. Because we don't really want to observe a system that's been observed 17 times. 17 times has already happened. We want to advance science. We want to take care of these stars that haven't been imaged in a long time. So my first step is to go through and find stars that are a little bit older. You know, look, this is last imaged in 1992. It's only been imaged once, right? And so those would be my things I'd key in on. I'd say, oh, hey, look at this. This has been a while. You know, even 2010 has been, you know, a little bit of time. It's something to consider. So the next step is you come over and you look at your theta. It doesn't really matter. No matter what it is, you're okay. You're happy with those numbers. Um, the numbers we need to care about really are separation, rho, and our magnitudes. So separation is how far apart the stars are. So if they're too close or too far away, we won't be able to really image them successfully. So the rule of thumb here is anything larger than 10 and smaller than 50 is okay. Anything above or below those values really is going to be hard to image. We might not even see it. They might be on top of each other or they might not even be in our same our same uh, image frame because our, uh, our telescope has a certain limit to its image frame and we may not be able to capture them. So that's the rule there, 10, between 10 and 50. And over here in our magnitudes, this is how bright they are. And so we want stars that are fairly bright. We don't want them too bright. We don't want them too dim. So the rule is we want our magnitudes be to be between 8 and 13. But we want the numbers between the two to be about 3 apart, right? So if it's 8, you can be up to 11. Don't be doing an 8 and a 12 or an 8 and a 13 because one will be so bright that it, that it dwarfs the other. And we won't be able to get, you know, a correct image on the two. So you want to be between 8 and 13. And between the two numbers here, your primary and your secondary, you don't want it to be bigger than a difference of 3. Right? And so when we come over here to our note, notes are something, once you've made sure that your 
row, your separation and your magnitude and your year are all okay, you're gonna wanna come over here and check the note. So these notes are these letters and what you do is you go to the catalog, you'll just come here and despite what it looks like, you'll click on format, not notes. And under the format, if you scroll down, it has the following codes. And each of these codes correspond to each of these letters that are here on the side. So we want to check and make sure that the note we have on our star doesn't make it so that we can't study it. So a good example is V here. It says proper motion or other technique indicates that this pair is physical. So somebody's already decided that the system we're describing is physical, which means we won't be adding anything to it if we image it. Because we either want to prove that a system is physical, add information so that someday someone else can, or proves that it's not physical. So if something's already been decided, whether it's physical or non-physical, we really don't want to image that system because it's already been, already been done. And so once we've done all of those steps, the last thing that we want to look at is we want to double check our declination over here. Because we want to make sure that we have a correct, and that you can do it on either side, right? Notice that we want to have at least a positive, or we want to have a section of the night sky, RA, that works, which we choose when we choose our section in the WDS catalog. When we, when we click into here, that's what we're choosing. So we know that's okay. What we're really worried about is this plus or negative sign. If you have a negative sign, that means you're in the Southern Hemisphere, and that's not gonna be able to be visualized. But anything that's a positive declination, we should be able to visualize. So this here's an example of a star I found that I would put on my list to be imaged, just an example. So as I go through 1905 to 2015, last time it was, Im it was imaged in 2015. So not great, but it's been a little bit of time. Um, it was only imaged four times, so that's not very much, right? If I come over here and I look at separation is above 10, below 50. Um, and my magnitudes are between 8 and 13. Notice I'm pushing 13 a little here, so I'm pushing the dim end. So that's something I would want to take into account and just be considerate of. It may not work. It might work. But it's, you know, something that's close to the edge. And then over here, I have got no note, and I'm good on my declination. So this would be a star that I would think would be okay to put in. So one last thing I would say is you don't want to do just one star when you send in things to be imaged. Really within the same, you know, area, same, you know, um, section of the night sky that we choose over here on the Washington Double Star Catalog. We really want to choose, you know, three to four stars because because the numbers work out right doesn't necessarily mean that it'll turn out right as we image it. So I would advise choosing three or four stars that really meet all of these different criteria. And you'll notice it's a little hard to tell. I seem to know what I'm doing about what each column means. And so sometimes you'll just have to double check. What I like to do is I like to have one of these open to what I'm looking at, and I like to have one of these open to, sorry, let me get into it, one of these open to just the top, so I know what each column means, and I can switch back and forth between the two to be able to know what it is, but um, that's all I have for choosing a star, it's pretty simple, just remember to get the coordinates, once you've got them, make sure to get the identifier and the coordinates, and you should be good to go. Thank you guys for watching.